first off I want to let you know that I float with flat brushes so I like the three-quarter and the half inch for the majority of my painting that's what you're going to I'm going to call for and I love mop brushes I have I use them a lot in my painting and they are nicely tapered they're very soft but not too soft they have a little bit of bounce to them they are nice and white so that you can see if your mop brush gets dirty you can see it that's why I like the white color of those especially okay first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush in my water and I've just got a small little water basin here just to show you I let the brush sit in there and get nice and saturated with the water blot it once twice maybe a third time I'm going to check and make sure I don't have water drips coming down and another thing I like to do is I like to have water drops on my palette. So I have these at the top of my palette typically. Okay. Also, I want to let you know that I always take a dry paper towel and I dampen about a three inch or so section with water before I begin my painting. Now I have a dry paper towel also but the moist paper towel, the purpose of this is that as I am floating color, if my float begins to drag from lack of moisture, I can swipe it across the toweling and it will pick up just enough moisture to continue my float without having to reload my brush. So I'm going to dip my brush into a little color. So it's only on one corner and I'm gonna blend it on my palette. One side, then the other make sure that you blend both sides of your brush okay so I'm gonna blend that that will allow the paint to creep across the brush but not go all the way to the edge we do not want the paint to creep all across the entire edge of the brush but if I want uh, the color to stay more concentrated on this edge but I want it to be blended I'm going to curve and I'm going to put more pressure. I'm putting a lot of pressure on that. This the water edge of the brush. I'm actually pressing down a little bit, blending both sides. And you will notice me doing this at different times throughout the DVD. But I can keep a, the color just a little darker. And I again, I blend both sides of the brush. One more thing about blending is to remember that nothing magical happens between here and your surface, your project. So make sure you're happy with your float, with your blend right here. This is where um, it all starts. You have to make sure that you're happy with it here before taking it to your project. Okay. As you're floating, I want to, I'm just going to load my brush again here. I want to stress to you that you do not need to try to make your float in one fell swoop down the section that you are trying to get painted. Okay? That is so stressful. That it's just like you hold your breath and you're and you're just you're tense and it's like, oh, take me away. So this is what I do. I'm gonna try to load my brush here. I walk my float. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm gonna walk my float wherever I want it to go. I'm not going to be stressed. I'm just going to walk it. Oh, I'm going to just have no worries. This is where the mop brush is going to come in and it's going to really change the look of your float. You're going to start in the water area and you're going to walk in toward the paint area. And that is where you can wipe up, pick up any of the little imperfections that will happen from using a, a tappy dabby movement with your float. Okay? 